the biblical truth of our hymn number 55 joyful joyful we adore thee written by henry jackson van dyke provenant brooklyn presbyterian clergyman it is said that this poem was given to the president of the college saying here's a hymn for you your mountains were inspired it must be sung to the music of Beethoven's Hymn to Joy. So what we have here now is joyful, joyful. That's what we're supposed to be. We adore thee, God. Well, starts off. It's for God. God of glory. only one glory we have and that's in God Lord of love the Bible says God is love for God so loved the world hearts unfold like flowers before thee that's the nature aspect of God the Creator when a flower opens up that's life when our hearts open up to God that's life it's all about the heart. With the heart, man believes on the righteousness. Opening, and it says flowers before thee, before God, not other man, before God. Opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness drive the dark doubt away. Victory over sin, victory over doubt, victory over fear relies upon God the Father and God the Son and our sins are placed upon the Lord Jesus Christ there's nothing else in cleanses of our unrighteousness but of Jesus there's nothing that can clear the storms but Jesus peace be still giver of immortal gladness Holy Spirit the fruits of the Spirit are love joy peace we got the Trinity here Fill us with the light of day. John chapter 3. The light or the darkness. John chapter 1. Jesus says, I'm the light. All thy works with joy surrounding. So, the main frame of this hymn is the joy of God. And I gotta say honestly for myself and for all mankind. We don't always bring joy to the Father. But when we do, it's the joy of the Lord. Earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing round about rounding. Again, I don't know about the singing, but the whole realm of the universe the Bible does say that God knows the names of all the angels and the stars. Center of unbroken praise. And that unbroken praise has been God is eternal and always been eternal. But the angels and the cherubims were created at one period of time, even before the time began. There is an aspect that the angels and the cherubims God said, let there be, or whatever, however he did it. And at that creation point, that's when the angels and the cherubim started singing to the glory of God and worshiping God right now, according to the book of Revelation, and it has not, and it will not ever stop. And then we will go home to glory, we will go home to New Jerusalem, and it doesn't stop. It's an everlasting praise of the everlasting God. Ever think about that? God has always been. And there was a point in time that nothing was worshiping God. Nothing created God, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But God created the angels. God created the cherubim. 
the fifth share of them that's now missing, that's Lucifer, that fell. He was the, the music director. He was in charge of the praise of the music. And we know he fell. But the praise is the singing began when God created it. The praises haven't stopped. Revelation chapter 4 says, holy, holy, holy. Even right now. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing mountain, cause us to rejoice in it. God's creation. Not the, not the works and fruits of evolution, but the creation of the creator and how beautiful it is. Man takes for granted, I have learned. The wondrous, miraculous eyesight that God's given us and the hearing capability that we have, along with smelling and tasting and touching. And when one loses or vision is diminished or hearing, or your taste is going, or your feeling is, is, is going away. The joy that we take for granted, as we take for granted the senses that God's given us. And our senses that God's given us, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, tongue, capable of feeling, was all to the honor of God's creation. And there are things we don't see without instruments, and yet our eyes behold. We can't see smells, but the beauty of smells. We not, may not see that chanting bird, but we can hear it. All to the praise of God, creation, creator, not evolution. Thou art giving. God's always giving. God has been given since he made a Adam. He's given him life. He's given him air to breathe. He's given him a wife. He's given him children. He's given a land to have his feet on. He's given fruits and vegetables. He's given food. He's given comfort. He's given life he's given mercy he's given grace and you could fill pages and pages and pages of what god has given us count your many blessings name them one by one and all oh, the volumes of notebooks that it would take think about if we were from our point of time we take from midnight to midnight any given day, we were to write down every moment that God blessed us. Even blessings we don't think are, you know, pain and, and suffering and all that. We write them down because it's still a blessing. Because even if God gives us pain, He doesn't give us the ultimate pain. God is forever giving. And again, many men, many men, many people have taken God's giving for granted. And forgiving is on numerous forgivings of God. Since the day I have been born, I have committed numerous sins. Ones that I know, ones I don't know, and ones I'm still learning. And the ones I just keep doing. And yet the Bible says, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is never a period in time for the born again Christian. But God says, no, with the right heart, no, I'm not going to forgive you. God will never say that. Ever blessing, 
forever blessing, making happy, even when we're down. My ears, I, 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 I hear it ringing, and I can't hear all the time now. And it's frustrating. It's changed my mood. And yet I still have joy. And I'm thanking God that I still can hear. I'm not completely deaf. I'm praying to God that I won't be. And I've got joy that he will answer my prayer. Ever blessed. Wellspring of joy. Of living. Yeah, I want to go home. Yeah, I want to be absent from the body. And yet, when I partake of evangelism, I'm able to tell people about Jesus, or I'm able to grow people in Jesus. And I have a testimony about Jesus, or something about Jesus. Brings me more joy. And that when you serve the Lord and do right, it is better than any television. You can't rent such entertainment in a movie or a game as you have serving the Lord. Many too many Christians don't have that joy because they're not doing what God's told them to do. Ocean death of happy rest. What is the death of our oceans on this planet? And how many times when you've been in the will of God, you've had that rest while the storms of life are beaten inside the ship as it did in the Gospel of Luke and getting ready to take the ship down. And Jesus is in control. Thou, though our Father, God, Christ our brother, Jesus, all who live in love are thine. I have been adopted by the Holy Spirit of God the Father through Jesus Christ. There is no end of that sonship. There is no end to that adoption that God I'm forever in his family. I am never going to be returned unto Satan. Though once he was my father. The love that God has shed, Satan has no love. The world doesn't know what love is. But that love of God, and this thing about a holy, righteous, undefiled without sin love that goes for us that are saved into eternity where there'll be no harm no pain no suffering no departure that pure undefiled love that god is going to give us can't match anything on this planet earth today or any planet any star Teach us how to love each other. The commandment is love your brother. Love your enemy. And the writer of this hymn has acknowledged to the fact is loving others is not something that comes natural. It may for some, but may not for others. Though Christian, though saved, there will be Christians in your life that irritate you. Not because of hatred or strife or envy. Just your two natures, though you're in Christ together, you just don't rub the right way. You're an irritant. Though wrong, and yet there are so many natures of human beings. And yet the love of God, we've got to learn to love above all. And that learning comes from God who is love. 
The world can't teach love because they don't know God that, who is love. And as far as the aspect of the Bible and Jesus Christ, Jesus said, marvel not if the world hates you. So if the world hates God, hates Jesus, they don't know what love is when the Bible says God is love. They are of the world. They are of the devil. And the devil is a liar. He's a murderer. And without love, without mercy, without grace. Lift us to thy joy divine. That's almost like a rapture when the whole church is called up. We'll be lifted up. Mortals. <laughs> That's me. I'm going to die. Join the mighty chorus. Join it now. Which the morning stars began. That's creation. The authors write about a creation, not evolution. Love divine God is reigning over us, leading us with mercy's hand. That's a wonderful great hand of God. Ever singing. Again, there's that ever of God again. Can you imagine taking your mouth and your tongue and your lips forever praising God and you're not going to get tired. You may not need a cup of water to, to wet your lips or your tongue. They're not may not ever dry. I mean, I don't know if we're going to drink in heaven. But if we don't, imagine your mouth never drying out. You're never tiring. You never get exhausted from praising God forever. And it'll be always about God forever. And never about yourself. Never about anybody else but God. And Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Without sin. Without envy. Without anger. Without anything that's wicked and vile and evil. March we onward. Keep going. Paul says, I press toward the mark. Victors. Even when we die, we are absent from the body and present with the Lord. For those who have become martyrs of Jesus in the Word, it's not a lost cause. There is no failure. That person has gone off to glory to be with Jesus. And the Bible speaks about that they get a crown. Cancer has, has devoured a loved one and they've died. If they're saved, they go off to glory. They're cancerless. They will never have cancer, never have illness or pain or anything of medical needs ever again. That's the victory. Jesus got victory over the grave and over death and over hell and over the devil. Those who are saved, it's victory. Faith is the victory, the hymn said. In midst of strife, that's the world. That's what the world gets. Everything in this world gets strife. Troubles, problems. Joyful music. The world don't have joyful music. The world's music is a mess. It's aggravating. Leads us sunward. That's a weird word. Sunward. To the Son Jesus Christ. In triumph, again, that's victory. Song of life. Eternal life, rise in the sun, rise in the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever.